Hello friends. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Grandmaster R.B. Ramay from Prochess Training. So every week we are uh, giving some selected positions from different topics which are very instructive in nature to our uh, subscribers or Prochess Training. The point of this is to make them play in instructive positions under different teams so that they can uh, get a practical experience playing such positions. And also, since uh, tournaments, award the board tournaments are not happening, we thought it will be a good uh, training for our subscribers. So this week, uh, the position given is what you see on the board. It was played between Vishwanathan Anand and Wesley So at Gashimo Memorial 2015, six years ago. And by this, um, this was played in, at the fifth round. And the score was, Wesley So was leading with three and a half out of four. So for Anand having the white pieces and playing against the tournament leader, it will be nice if he can score a win. And for this game, they had uh, made a special preparation. And Wesley So was known to stick to playing e4, e5 with white back then. That's one of his main repertoires against e4. And this was the position reached, the early d3 structures. And black has just played knight b8. And this was quite popular back then. The idea is to put the bishop on p7 and the knight on d7 so that the knight on c6 will not block the bishop on b7. So this rearrangement, it also happens in rare variation of mainline Rylopas, but this also is quite popular. And at this point, usually they play most like a4, trying to exploit the drawback of knight b8, the rook is hanging and he cannot play rook b8. With the knight on c6, he will have the option to go rook b8. So a4 has been tried at that point of time. But Anand and his team, they came up with a very interesting idea found by Anand second Gajewski from Poland. And this was the move. Now, we had expected our participants, subscribers to find this move and the main idea behind this. So the point is, generally when opponent plays a move like knight b8, and to bring the knight back into the game with knight d7, the main problem with this approach is he loses some time. He has to waste few moves to get the knight, to relocate the knight from c6 to d7. So whenever our opponent takes some such liberty on time, then that is a precisely the exact moment where if he can open up the position, he will be least prepared to meet the opening up of the position because his pieces are temporarily not in the right place. So when the pieces are in the right squares and opponent opens the position with pawn breaks, we will be generally able to handle it quite nicely. But like I said, his pieces are temporarily not in the best place to meet the opening up of the position with f4. So the main idea behind playing knight g5 is currently we are attacking the pawn on f7 and what happens to h6? Many of us might expect that white wanted to give two pieces for rook but obviously two pieces are more powerful than a rook and a pawn in most of the cases. So the main idea is not knight f7 and give two pieces, but to give up a piece in full by playing f4. And let's say if hg5, fg5, already you can see the f file has been opened. Not only that, the queen's diagonal has also been opened. So you can quickly form a very powerful attack. Now <clears throat> we are going to capture the knight and then we'll be attacking with equal pieces. And then the queen can join with queen h5. The knight can also come to d5. And black will sorely miss these pieces on the queen's side for the at defending the king on the king's side. So black has two options. One, he can block queen h5 idea with this move. But the problem is we are going to come the other way. Now the knight is attacked. And when you move the knight, you simply come queen h4, attacking the bishop. So the best square is here. And now we can simply bring the rook. Okay. 
and this is a winning attack so we are going to capture on e6 followed by rook h3 and it will be a mate, big mating attack so this is very dangerous so the other alternative available is to put the knight here but the problem is we can simply win back the material with h3 and the knight has nowhere else to go but if you want to be a little more creative, you can start with g6. And then uh, using the pin, somehow you should try to get the queen to the h file, and then it will be over. You can even consider some kind of sacrifices if required. But here he has this nice idea, which is to open up the bishop so that the queen can come to h4. Okay, so he wants to play bishop c5 check and then queen h4. For example, if you do this, then he can give a check and suddenly the attack backfires. Okay, so we should not be greedy for material, but you can play a prophylactic move. Now you can consider taking the pawn because bishop c5 is not a check. So he has to play bishop c5 anyway, and now he's threatening queen h4. So once we realize he's threatening queen h4, we can play the prophylactic move queen e1, which prevents queen h4. Now we are in a position to grab the pawn and try to get rid of the knight or move the queen somehow to the h file. So you can consider this move. The point is to simply remove the dangerous pawn on g6. So we take bishop d5. Now this pawn, we are going to capture on f7 if he saves the rook. So obviously king safety should take precedence over material. So by removing this dangerous pawn, black king becomes safe. The price we pay is we lose this exchange. And black has this shot to lure the king out because the g1 square is controlled by the bishop. So the king will not be able to hide back. So we take queen h5 check, king g3. And now he can simply give perpetual check and it should be a draw. Okay. So <clears throat> instead of g6, probably h3 needs to be considered. But it is also dependent on whether black will be able to find a move like d5. The point is bishop to d5. I mean, Bishop c5 check and queen h4 idea. So this idea, he should find it. When you play h6, that is the point. Once you reach that point, finding this idea with d5 is easier. But whether you can find this idea before playing h6, that is a different question altogether. And in the game, what happened for knight g5? Wesley so did not go for h6, but he played knight c6. Now this may look a very strange move because the knight was on c6 he just played knight b8 and white played knight g5 and black comes back knight c6 so hasn't black, white, black lost time by going knight b8 and coming back to knight c6 that's a very important question but we have to see that white is trying to build an attack with f4 and then shift his pieces to the king side and once that happens black will feel a big danger to the king so what black is trying to do he is trying to quickly get pieces from the queen side which are anyway underdeveloped to the defense of the king side so what is he threatening to do by playing knight g5 the knight has abandoned control of the d4 square when the knight was on f3 it was controlling the d4 square but by moving the knight away to g5 we have weakened control on the square d4 so this is what Black is trying to exploit. So what lesson we can learn from this is Black saw not only the idea of knight g5, which is to play f4. If he sees only the idea of knight g5, then we are very much likely to panic. Oh my god, my opponent is getting a strong attack. I don't know how to face it, right? We can get into this kind of a panic mode. So what the strong players do, they pay attention to the opponent idea but they also pay attention to the drawback of the opponent's previous move. So what is the drawback of my opponent's previous move? So this is another very 
undervalued or underestimated way to think. And in Anand's preparation, this move was considered to be the best move for black. So he wants to play knight d4. Now, when we talk about strong players, they not only see ideas, they also see the drawback. This is one lesson we can learn. Now, looking from white's viewpoint, white played knight g5 mainly to push the pawn on f4. And generally, they say we have to be consistent in implementing our plans. This is what many coaches say. But I kind of disagree with this kind of thinking because it means you should not pay attention to what your opponent is doing. You simply consistent, be consistent in implementing your plan. I don't agree with this at all. Our implementation of, of our plan is largely dependent on how the opponent responds. So when we play knight g5 with the idea of f4, we should not simply shut our eyes and uh, irrespective of what opponent does, we play h4. This is not the proper way to think. So we have to be ready to be flexible with our implementation of our plan. So what Anand does when he sees knight c6 and the threat of knight d4 and the knight can come back to e6 quickly. Block the diagonal and offer an exchange for this dangerous knight. Right. So when he sees that, so he stops implementing his obvious plan. Now, this is a very important lesson for us. So my suggestion, don't be blindly consistent in implementing your plans. You are, it's perfectly all right if you are going to change the way you implement your plan. So Anand played bishop a2 because he wants to preserve this bishop and he does not want to give this bishop for the knight after knight d4. Now he's in a pos ready position to play f4 so wesley so implements his idea which is anyway to play 94 now we can see that if we play f4 there is no big deal so we could have started with f4 knight d4 and bishop a2 there's white did not do anything great by playing bishop a2 first but here you can see again anand differs implementing his plan blindly and he adapts to how opponent plays and generally there is a principle like when you are attacking, it makes a lot of sense to bring new pieces into the scene of action, especially the pieces which are not already not in the scene of action. So here the bishop is somewhat in the scene of action. The queen also somewhat in the scene of action. The rook is ready to join by after f4. So the pieces which are not joining in the scene of action are the knight and the rook. So these two pieces are nowhere participating in the attack as of now. So what he does instead of playing f4, which is an obvious move, he removes opponent's best piece. Now, black has a choice. One, he can exchange this knight and then the best piece for black is removed or he should be ready to allow one more knight to join the king side attack. Right? And then you will get opportunities to go knight g3, knight h5, or knight g3, knight f5. So this is a difficult choice. Either he should exchange the knight or go back knight e6. But that allows knight g3 ideas. So Wesley Sword decided to take on e2. Now the b8 knight has been traded off for the c3 knight. So in many sense, it makes sense for black, isn't it, this exchange? And now he goes h6, which is very good. Wants to drive the knight back away from the king. And Anand is proceeding with this idea. Coming back with the knight, I don't think is a serious option. So this is a critical moment in the game. Now, so far, Wesley So has played really well. He found the creative idea of coming back to knight c6 with the knight on b8. And here, what he should have done, he should have gone e f4. And the point is, now you come back knight f3. Now the threat is bishop f4. And once you get bishop f4, this is a very good version. And then uh, he can double the rooks and launch a ferocious attack against the king. So he has to take risk by playing g5. But playing a move like g5 over the board, in standard time control is very risky. Maybe in blitz or bullet or even in rapid, probably this is conceivable. Um, but because your opponent may not have sufficient time to play the best moves and punish your 
over ambitious idea but in standard control to weaken the king with this kind of pawn chain just for winning a pawn generally strong players will try to avoid and here white has an idea to go g3 trying to break the g5 so he has to take fg3 and now if white takes the obvious hg3 then this file is not being opened and he also has this good move so whenever opponent plays in the flank we have to open the center so this way once this kind of come the bishop a2 loses its strength but white has an interesting idea is to sacrifice the second pawn with h4 okay now you want to simply win this pawn and if you play a move like g4 then knight d4 and you can see that one idea is bishop at 6 the other idea is knight f5 right and then for two pawns white will have a fantastic attack but here he can go bishop h3 and white should simply ignore he should go after the king with this and black has this nice move knight g4 not wasting time in trying to win material but trying to get as many pieces in front of the king as possible the bishop and queen can also contribute so this position is quite complex but to assess this position properly to evaluate it properly and go for this risky continuation with ef4 and g5 is really difficult in a practical game so wesley so did not go for ef4 but he took hg5 now after hg5 fg5 again you are threatening this now he has two moves uh, bishop g4 and knight g4 like earlier if he goes bishop g4 then we go queen of two like we have seen earlier and now you have this option to win this pawn he goes here and queen h4 okay now the threat is bishop g6 queen f7 mate the other threat is simply queen into g4 so two threats are there so whenever you have extra material it can be one or two pawns or an exchange and when we are coming under an attack from our opponent the best way to defend is generally by returning the material but people who are materialistic they generally try to cling on to that extra material and push back the attack but that is not the best way whenever you have extra material coming under attack you should always consider giving the material back so from that sense you have to do this and come here now we are not able to play g6 because of the spin right so the rook is under attack when the rook goes back you can always get out of the pin with king g8 and this portion is quite unclear in terms of material it's balanced because we have two pawns for rook and two pieces so the portion is unclear so this was quite possible for black but in the game he played knight g4 which is also fine and anand went g6 this idea we have already seen is giving pressure on f7 now here also black has two perfect ways to hold the balance which is knight h6 not an easy move at all because you are allowing all this bishop h6 breaking up of the pawn structure on the king's side and the other move which we had seen earlier d5 so let us see d5 now bishop d5 bishop check king here queen h4 the difference is earlier our queen was on d1 knight c3 knight c6 but now the queen is guarding the second rank so here you have the opportunity to go g3 and now black has a choice he can go queen h3 or queen h5 now the best move is queen h5 and the point is after bishop a8 you simply develop the last undeveloped piece and you are threatening look into a8 so and also the bishop gives more protection to our weak pawn on f6 so if we move the bishop to c6 then you can simply remove the pawn and after rook f8 king f8 even though white has an extra exchange the attack is too strong we are going to come knight f2 check which cannot be stopped and if king g2 queen h3 and it's a very terrific attack so he cannot go bishop c6 
So he has to come bishop d5 and get rid of one of the attacking pieces. But here we have bishop d5, e d5, and this beautiful move, bishop f2, which is threatening win h2 mate. So white is forced to capture this. And then we have this check. And here you can come queen g1, queen f3, queen g2, queen d1. This is a sample variation. And it is a draw. The point is for queen d1 check, if you try to come up with the king, then he can open the f file. And then all these mates, checkmate with queen f1 is threatened. So the king becomes extremely exposed. Even though white has an extra piece, these two rook and bishop are not helping white at all. So D, this is quite possible. But in the game, what happened after uh, knight g4, g6, Wesley so made the first slight inaccuracy in the game. He played bishop g5. And here, Anand played h3. The point is, if he moves the knight, he wants to get access to the h5 square for the queen. So bishop c1, rook c1, knight is under attack, knight h6, and now queen h5. This is a small inaccuracy already, probably a big inaccuracy. He should first take rook f7. And if you take knight f7, you can come here. There is no more knight h6 because of the pin. And we are threatening queen h7 mate. So he has to capture with the rook. And then you take gf7, king here, queen h5. Now the threat is you bring the last piece into the game, rook f1, followed by queen g6, queen h7, queen h8. There is not enough time for black to put up a defense against this threat. So this is what he should have done. But Anand played queen h5. Now he's threatening rook f7. So bishop e6 is more or less post. And Anand's idea was this. So he wants to regain the knight which he has sacrificed. And there is no good way to save this knight. And here, what black should have done is to seek active counterplay with rook of four, g5, and bring the queen into the game. And then here you can play king g2, just rook e8. Get all the pieces. Now, it is not easy to win in this position. Okay, the position is quite equal. You get the piece back, but there is no entry for white pieces. And the rook can also join the defense after g6, g6. So the position is equal. But Wesley So did not play rook f4. Instead, he played c6. This is mainly to give second rank defense. Okay, after g5, g6, g6 comes, he wants to include the rook like this. And the other intention is instead of rook f4 and queen f8, which would have defended the h6 pawn, he wants to come queen b6 followed by queen e3 and uh, to create some problem for the white king. This is the point of c6. So one idea is to get the queen to b6. The other is to give second rank defense with rook a7. So that's why he's playing the c6 move. And here Anand made a mistake again. He should have gone g5 and it have given very good chances to win. But he changed the move order to prevent this queen b6 check. So he included these two moves and then played g5. So here he thought, OK, the queen b6, queen e3 idea is prevented. But black has a very good defense. So let us see that. He comes to exchange. So whenever you are under attack, you have to try to exchange pieces. So now g h6, check. Now pawn is under attack, so queen f8, check. This is mainly to provide protection. Now, we should not get the king cut off on the king side. So Anand goes to king e2, g8, 6. And here, he is going to get the queen in and then start giving some checks. And then maybe he can open the position with d5, loosen white spawn structure, and through the gaps, he can give some checks. So Anand plays the prophylactic move, which attacks the e6 pawn. And at the same time, prevents queen f4, controls the f4 square. 
so he comes up now he is ready for king g7 and take the pawn okay so this we should anticipate so he goes h4 and at this point this queen ending is extremely interesting and i would recommend you to study this end game little closely and uh, it is better to play a5 in this position okay the point is you should go a5 h5 a4 and it is not easy for white even though he has a very advanced protected pass pawn he is not able to find a way for the queen to enter the game okay because he can always play c5 so this is what he should have done sealed the queen side with a5 a4 but wesley so he thought by breaking this pawn chain he will have a better chance to give perpetual against the white queen so i played d5 and uh, anand played h5 probably e d5 is better and he played d4 so it looks like he has completely sealed the position and maybe if he given time he will do this as well okay and somehow we have to find an entry for our pieces either the queen or the king and now anand played a fantastic move which is d4 now what is the point he has stopped both these pawns from advancing now why is this important we will see now he has no useful moves so he plays here and he comes for an exchange now he cannot agree to a queen exchange at this point because the king is tied to the g pawn and the white king is free to move so what black when he waits you simply play c3 okay now if you take this and do this i will have d4 and the king simply enters eats all the pawn and wins the game and if you don't take on c3 if you simply wait then we still get an entry with this way and now the king will come back and enter the position win all the pawns because the black king is tied to the g pawn okay so very nice understanding so the move b4 is amazing and after queen f3 he cannot agree to the queen exchange so he went queen e7 and now how is white queen going to enter so you will see king d1 so he has to simply wait the queen has to control the f7 square so he is waiting with the king so he is getting ready to enter with the queen so he shifts the queen to that diagonal and then plays c3 now he is simply going to take cd4 ed4 queen d4 so he took now the king joins so he comes here somehow he wants to open the position with either of the pawn breaks maybe a5 and try to get an entry for the queen so here simply play this move and the queen is now stuck to protect against e5 and e7 entry for the white queen so he goes here so that when queen e7 or queen e5 comes it will come without a check anand plays this attacking the pawn draw back so he comes back king g7 to defend the pawn and okay so here you could go d4 as well so for queen e3 what wesley so did he went a5 so the point is if he takes queen h6 you take a b4 a b4 queen a7 and try to give some perpetual check okay and it also controls the queen h7 check so this uh, this way he wants to create some counterplay so that is why he did not defend the pawn so he plays a5 and now anand plays a cool move now he wants to come queen e6 check now if he defends then you simply capture and roll this pawn when the queen goes away we give checkmate with queen e6 so he cannot do that so he took a b4 check king f8 we take now he is in complete zugzwang the queen has to defend the f7 e5 and the king can take the pawn and we can come back all the way king g4 king f5 also after winning the c3 pawn the king can go to f5 and win so he tries one last trick to give perpetual check so white removes the dangerous pawn 
check and here. Now the queen controls the a2 check. So he played here and now queen b3. So the threat is he wants to exchange and the pawn ending is winning because of g7 and uh, queen f7 is also threatened. So black went queen a7, and now white played d4 and he resigned. The point is if ed4, queen d4 means queen f7 mate, you come king d3, king g7, you just go to pawn ending and white will win these pawns and win with the b pawn. So fantastic technique by Anand. And so Wesley also defended well. He found many creative ways to create counterplay in the queen and pawn ending. But one or two misses in the middle game after knight g4. Had he played correctly, the game would have ended in a draw. But otherwise, he would have missed this beautiful queen and pawn ending. So the queen and pawn ending in this game and also the concept of knight g5 f4 was very instructive idea by Anand. So with this, um, I'll end today's uh, analysis of the training games. And I would uh, request all of you to please go through the training camp, which we are having the workshop we are having for uh, Proches training customers, the annual subscribers. And uh, those of you who are not yet member of Proches training, I would uh, strongly recommend you to attend this camp if possible and uh, become a subscriber in Proches training. We have around 30 grandmasters who are providing training in our platform. And we have divided the players into different groups so that the syllabus, the teaching material can be customized according to the strength of the player. Thank you very much for attending today's session.